This is a quick video to get you oriented to Raptor. Uh, once you install and run Raptor, uh, you'll be faced with a screen like this. And we're going to focus our attention on the symbols at the beginning of this video. Uh, we're going to do an output symbol first. And I'm going to click on that in the symbols group. And by doing that, you'll see my mouse pointer changes when I get to that line between the start and end symbols. And Raptor helps you not lose your work by requiring you to save your work frequently. So I'm just going to give it a name and pay attention to where I save it. And you'll see an output symbol is now in my flowchart. Um, and I'm going to look at the examples to see how I can put uh, something into this output symbol. And if I want exact text output, I'm going to put that exact text into double quotes, like it shows in the example. A very common thing to do with a computer programming language is to do hello world. And although Raptor is not quite a programming language, it is it does share many characteristics of a programming language. It's really just a way to make flowcharts that run. So you'll see there's a run menu, and you can go to the run menu and do reset execute does the same thing as clicking on that triangle, which I did in the previous example. So the, the black triangle will run it, or the run menu. All right, so as I mentioned, it's a uh, flowcharting program. You can make flowcharts in Microsoft Word or Visio or, or by hand, but these flowcharts actually run, which makes them a little bit more fun. Uh, this program didn't do anything, so I'm gonna make it do a little bit more by adding an input symbol. Again, I'm going to click on the input symbol one time on the left under symbols and then move my cursor to the line where I want to input it. Now this prompt is going to be what a user would see. And let's make this program not just say hello world, let's make it say hello to whoever's using the program. So we're going to enter a prompt, a question that will be asked of the user. And that goes in the top box. And then the bottom box gets a variable. All right, this is, I tried to save this and it's showing me an error. I don't, I, want to, I don't want to show you stuff working properly. I want to also show you what you might see when it doesn't work properly. That error was caused because it didn't understand the text in my prompt. The text in the prompt, just like the output, needs to be in double quotes. Right, so now it is prompting me. That's the text that I put up there. And whatever the user types in this box is going to be stored in a variable called name. And I'm not going to get too deep into how variables work or anything like that here. But just notice in Raptor, uh, it shows that the word Bob is being stored in a variable called name. We're still not doing anything with it in this program. So I'm going to modify my output symbol. I'm going to double click on that output symbol to modify it. And this time I'm going to look at example number two, where it shows we could put exact text in double quotes, or we could put a variable name. And the, my variable name happens to be the word name in this example. It could be anything. The user or the programmer defines the variable name. And I'm going to put the word Tom. And you'll see the output box this time. Instead of outputting hello world, it output Tom. So this program is starting to do a little bit more. Now I'm going to try uh, output uh, the example three where I wanted to say, hello, Tom, or hello, whichever name gets put in when the user runs the program. So I'm going to do a double quote to do exactly whatever is in the double quote. Hello, we want that to be output every time. So that goes in double quotes. And then a plus symbol is how it's done in Raptor. This is going to vary between programming languages. And I'll run it to see how it looks. Every time you make a little change to your program, I strongly recommend you run it. And we see here that there's no space between hello and Bob. So we're going to have to do another modification. If you look closely at the example, you see there is a white space before the end double quote. So that's what I'm going to add. And that will be output exactly. A, a space gets output exactly because it's inside the double quotes. And then whatever name the user had entered in the input box. So this is a working program, uh, may or may not meet the specifications that you need, but I want you to do a couple other things for the purposes of your assignments. I want you to add a comment. You do that by right-clicking on any symbol. 
and then you can type whatever you want. There's no rules for syntax or anything with comments. And the comments I would like for you to add are at least your name uh, and a description of the program. So if your name was Thomas Smith, you would just put that. And this is also you uh, verifying your work. It's also to getting you in the habit of documenting your programs because documentation is a very important thing to do in computer programming. It's very important because often other people will need to modify your programs or you might need to revisit them uh, later on and you'll want to refresh your memory as to what's going on with the program and how it works. So you don't have to spend time trying to decipher the code. You can just read plain written English. So you might want to write something like uh, what you used for the first time in this program. And this program was the first time we used an input and an output symbol. Um, but maybe you would write something about how you did something or anything that would help you or anybody else reading this program to make sense of it. If your program has a very good user interface, uh, you don't need to describe exactly you know, every detail of what it does because it should be pretty obvious just from using the program as it is in this one. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a comment. And you can then uh, reposition that comment by uh, moving it around once your mouse pointer changes uh, as you uh, click on it. Uh, you can also do some other things with these symbols. You can drag and drop them to change the order. All right, I just put my mouse pointer over it and moved it up and tried to run it. And you'll see I get an error. I tried to output the variable name, but there was no name being held in memory because we hadn't gotten to the input symbol yet. We can't do the output before we do the input. So you can also cut and paste. I just demonstrated by right clicking on a symbol and make sure your mouse pointer is on that line when you paste or else you won't be able to paste it properly. There are many resources available to you uh, to help you with Raptor. The book does not help you with Raptor. The book is about general programming concepts, but there's a great help section within the Raptor program itself, as there are in many programs. Um, feel free to check that out. The contents, the index are great. You can search. And also, you're going to want to go to everything in the input section of your learning modules. Uh, I've posted some resources there for you that pertain to each particular task for that module. So read every uh, item in the input module. And also the labs are in your learning module. The labs have um, sample problems and they have um, videos and also sample answers. So you can actually go into your lab and get all that stuff. And when you're done and ready to uh, submit your Raptor, you're going to find where you saved it, find the .rap file, look at whatever folder it's in. I did save as just to bring that back up to refresh my memory. And that's the one file you're going to need to uh, attach and submit for your homework.